Ukrainian armed forces showed the results of the ongoing shelling by the Russian army in the Kursk region, the targets of which were residential areas. Russians are burning Russian houses, emphasized a Ukrainian soldier who filmed the burning area on video. A video of Russian soldiers destroying the homes of their own citizens was published on the Korn Group Telegram channel. Recall at least a dozen clips show how the Russian civilian population left behind in the territory now under Ukrainian control live now and how much they depend on the Ukrainian soldiers. Residents of Sudza complain that they have not been evacuated by the Russian military and are even being exposed to their strikes as seen in this geo-located footage from the local ice hockey stadium showing the devastation caused by a Russian air bomb. Recent footage highlights Ukrainian soldiers delivering humanitarian aid to Russian civilians and how a local woman warmly greets the Ukrainian soldiers, offering blessings and expressing gratitude for their assistance. The humane treatment demonstrated by the Ukrainian army has even led one woman to declare on camera that such is Ukraine. This series of interactions vividly illustrates the significant difference in how Ukrainian and Russian soldiers conduct themselves when entering foreign territory with the Ukrainians fostering goodwill and support among the local population. Simultaneously, Russian soldiers released several frustrated videos addressing the male population of the Kursk Oblast, criticizing them for fleeing the war rather than staying to defend their homeland. They urged the men to either take up arms or, at the very least, dig trenches and provide their vehicles to support the soldiers risking their lives in defense of Kursk. However, the local population remains skeptical of these military appeals and prefers to evacuate the danger zone as quickly as possible, a sentiment deepened by the actions of Russian forces themselves. Let us recall that this is not the first time that the occupiers have attacked their own homes, but even aircraft. As reported on September the 12th, a light aircraft was shot down in the Mamansk region, which the Russian military mistook for a Ukrainian armed forces UAV. As noted, the two light sport aircraft, ATEC 321, Fata NG, and BRM Aero Bristel NG5, took off from the landing site in the Apartiti municipal district to Arkhangelsk. Half an hour later, the region lifted airspace restrictions that had been imposed due to the UAV attack. Apparently, not everyone got the drone attack warning. After takeoff, the pilot of one of the planes saw that the other plane was behaving strangely. He raised an alarm signal. It turned out that the other plane had been fired upon with small arms. After the shooting, the pilots of both planes requested a change in the flight plan. The first decided to land at the Apatiti airfield and the second returned to the place of departure. Their flight lasted about 20 minutes. After the landing, it became known that the bullets had pierced the wing and headlights of the plane. Earlier on August the 20th, it was reported that four drunken Russian soldiers shot at a civilian car in the Kursk region. Russia's surge in the use of guided bombs has added new urgency to a long-running debate over whether Ukraine should be allowed to use weapons from Western allies to strike military targets deep inside Russia. The New York Times reports, Ukraine has for months asked for the use of Western long-range weapons to strike military installations that Russia uses to launch missiles and station warplanes that drop bombs, the publication says. 
U.S. officials speaking on condition of anonymity said that Britain and France, which provided Ukraine with long-range storm shadows stroke scalp missiles, are apparently waiting for approval from U.S. President Joe Biden, the New York Times noted. Biden, meanwhile, is facing pressure in U.S. foreign policy circles. In particular, senior U.S. military planners no longer advise doing so, the publication added. Biden now appears to be weighing how far into Russia to allow Ukraine to use the ATACMS missiles that the United States first gave to Kyiv last year in May. Biden reluctantly agreed to allow Ukraine to launch ATACMS into Russia to target military bases that were used to attack the Ukrainian border city of Kharkiv, the publication says. Experts say ATACMS could now specifically target Russian ground-based air defense systems that threaten Ukraine's nascent fleet of F-16 fighters, which could be critical in countering Russian guided bombs. But it remains unclear whether Ukraine would fly F-16s into Russia, and NATO countries that have donated the jets are divided on whether to do so. It is also noted that if the F-16s cross the border, they will be able to target Russian aircraft using American medium-range missiles known as AMRAM, which the United States has already sent to Ukraine. In addition, it is noted that the Biden administration is ready to provide Ukraine with JASM air-launched cruise missiles, which can be used with the F-16. Ukraine is already capable of striking deep into Russia with domestically built drones and is testing a new long-range surface-to-surface -surface missile that could be launched without Western permission. But when it comes to countering guided bombs, U.S. officials and experts say Ukraine will need to strike deep into Russia with fighter jets and ground-based air systems, nearly all of which would require Western approval, The Times writes.